Welcome to an episode of my Linux driver tutorials. In today's video I want to show you how you can register a device number and implement a read and write function or a read and write callback in your character device. But hey, I already did some videos about this, so why am I doing this again? Well, basically in my previous videos I have used a method which was called legacy by the book Linux Device Drivers 3rd Edition. And this book covers kernel 2 point something, so it's extremely old. And today I will show you uh, um, yeah, another way to register device numbers. And the second reason is when I explained how the read and write callbacks worked, my explanation wasn't the best, so let me try again this time. I will put links to my older videos in the description as well, so you can watch the videos too. And maybe you can give me feedback in the comments if my newer explanations are better than the older ones. This would be really interesting for me to know. But now, let's start. So you can see here I'm connected to my Raspberry Pi, on which I'm doing all my driver development for this tutorials over SSH. And first let's talk about what are device numbers and how they are linked to device files. So if you want to know where your device files are, you just have to look in the slash dev folder. So these are all device files. For example, here we have a device file for our serial port, for our GPIO chip, for I2C, for example. And if we take a closer look at a device file, yeah, let's pick the I2C device file here. And let's sh show the arguments you can see here. Here we can see two numbers. The first number here is the major device number and the second number here is the minor device number. And over these device numbers, the device files are connected to a driver. If you're interested in which driver they're connected to, what we can do is we can take a look at the file proc devices and in here let's search for 89, which was the device number of my I2C1 node. So here we can see the major device number 89 is connected to the I2C driver. So whenever we are opening a device file with major number 89, the, the callback functions implemented in our I2C minus dev module will be executed. Okay, so now maybe let's register a device number in one of our own drivers and let's implement a read and write function for it. So let me navigate into my Linux driver tutorials folder and in here I will use my simple Linux kernel module as a template for today's video and I will create a new folder I will call my cdev. Oh, yeah. Okay. And in here you can see I have the sources for my driver and a make file to build it. First thing I do is I will rename the sources to my cdev.c and I will change this in the make file as well. Okay, so now I'm able to build it. So now let me open up the driver. This is just a local kernel module. And the first thing I will do is I will add some more includes. So I'll need Linux slash fs, Linux slash uaccess, and Linux slash cdev for my character device I want to create. I will change the description as well. An example for registering correct device numbers. Numbers for character devices. Okay, cool. So the old way I've used previously is I've used the function register character device. I've used this for create a character device and registering a device number. As arguments I had to pass in the major device number of my character device, then and then a name. And last but not least, um, a file operation struct containing the file operations I want to do. But with the new way, the registering of a device number and the creation of the character device is split into two paths. But the advantage is we can, um, we can allocate more than one device number at once. So let me show you how this is done. First, I need to define the major device number I want to use, or let's call it device number. So I want to use major device number 64. 
and the dev um, dev number name which will appear in proc devices will be my cdev. Okay, and then I will need some global variables. So first I need a variable from the type struct cdev for my character device and I will call it my cdev. And later I will need a character buffer to which I can read and write um, something too. So here I will create a buffer from the size 265 bytes. Okay, then I will declare a file operation struct in which I can overload um, my yeah, callback functions and I want to implement a read function which I will call my read and I will implement a write function which I will call my write. So I will implement them in a second but now I have them here. Okay, so I need a status variable. And now the first thing I will do is I will register the device numbers. And this can be done with the function register um, character device range. No, not range, region. Okay, the first argument here is the device number, but the device number contains of the major and the minor number. So I need a new variable here, I will call def number, and with make um, def, I will create a device number. So the major will be def number, the minor will be zero. So let me pass this in here. The second argument is the amount of um, device numbers I want to allocate. So um, the first, device will have this number with major number 64 minus 0 and if I would allocate a second device the second would have major 64 minor 1 and so the minor is incremented all the time. But I only want to allocate one device here and last but not least I have to pass the name which will appear in proc devices so this will be dev number name. Okay in case status is um, return something smaller than 0 an error occurred and I will print out the message to the kernel's log. So I will print out my cdef error registering device number. And I will return the error code here. Okay, so now I have registered the device number. Now I can initialize or I can set up the character device I want to use. So therefore I will use the function cdef init. And as an argument, I have a pass a pointer to my character device, which is my cdef, and I have to pass in a pointer to the file operations, which are stored in file operations. Then I can I have to set the owner field of the character device, and I will set it to this module. Okay, and then the next step is I have to I am call the cdef add function and I want to add my cdef and the device numbers which should be used are dev number and I have to specify how much device numbers are used for this file. So here I have a one again. In case status is smaller than zero, once again an error occurred so I can copy these three lines here. So error um, adding cdef. Okay, and of course in here I have to call the function unregister character device region. Um, I need to pass def number and the number of devices I want to free. And that's it. Maybe let's print out a message. Everything worked fine here registered device number 640 created um, character device. Yeah, this is nice. And in the um, exit function, I have to call unregister, so I have to um, unregister my device number. And of course, I have to delete my character device. Okay, so now 
registering of the device number and creation of the character device is done. Now we can take care of implementing our read and write callback functions. So let's start with read. The return value is from the type S size T and these are the number of bytes which were read successfully. I will call the function my read. The first argument is from the type struct file and it's a pointer to the file which is, which from which we want to read from. Then the second argument is a character or a char pointer I will call user buffer. And then I have the length of my user buffer, so how many bytes I can read. And last but not least, I have an uh, argument from the type L of T. This is a pointer containing an offset. I will talk about this offset just in a second. Then I will need two variables, not copied and to copy. And to copy is len if len, so the size of this user buffer is smaller than 256. I will copy len bytes and if not, if len is bigger than 256, I will copy 256 bytes. Okay. Then I will call not copied. Oh no, I will assign not copied to copy to you to user, yes, because I want to copy what's inside my buffer, I want to copy to the user buffer. So the destination is user buffer, the source is buffer, and I want to copy two copy bytes. And this function returns the amount of bytes which were not copied. Okay, and then I will return um, to copy minus not copied. Okay, so in case um, I couldn't copy, all bytes and to copy the rest or the data will be stored and not copied and so here is the amount of bytes I, I have read successfully. Okay so now what's off or what's with this offset variable? Well maybe therefore let's add a kernel slog or let's add a line to the kernel slog. Um, my read called and let's print out the value of or the value at which my this pointer is pointing at. And this offset is used in yeah, a traditional file, for example. So behind this point, so this pointer is type of a cursor. So for example, if you have the content test in your file and you're executing a read, this offset is zero. So it will point to T here. So let's say you are executing two read calls and in the first um, read you are reading two bytes and in the second read you are reading two bytes again. So then first this off variable will be set to zero and then you will read the t and the e for example and then in the second call this off will be set to two so it wants to read the next two bytes here for example. So here in this device I don't really want to use it but for example, this offset is also used to indicate the end of the file. So for example, cat will only terminate if it reaches the end of a file. And the end of the file is, is reached when um, read return, returns zero. So what I will do now here is I will um, check if the offset is bigger or equal to, to copy, because if so, I will return zero. And down here, I will write the variable behind this pointer with, or I will increment this with um, the number of bytes I've read successfully already. And this way, when I'm catching my device file, what will happen is it will call my read once, the, this pointer points to a variable which is set to zero and so this um, condition is not met. It will do the copy and it will copy um, the user buffer into the buffer, everything worked fine. And then it will do a second call of my read. This time the um, variable this pointer points at is equal to to copy 
and so to return zero and therefore cat knows the end of the file was reached. Cool. Good, the next thing we have to do is we have to implement the write callback. So let me copy these 15 lines here. So basically the arguments are just the same. The only difference is the, the user buffer is now a const char um, string. Um, and maybe let's print out my write here and I don't need this offset. So let me delete it. So I also don't need this. And now I will need the function copy from user. So my destination is now buffer. Ah. I want to copy it. I w so the source is user buffer and I want to copy two copy bytes. Okay, so that should be it. So let me try to compile it. So I will run make and let's see how much mistakes I've made. Okay. Ah, yeah, def number is not declared. My C def, yeah, two typos. This is not so bad. So here, of course, first I have to calculate the device number. I want to unregister here. And this is my C def. Okay, so let me try to build this once again. This is looking good. Then I will load the module. Done. And now if we take a look at, or if we search for my cdev in proc devices, we can see, okay, major number 64 is assigned to my cdev. Cool. The next thing we have to do is we have to create the device file and I will call, or I will also name it my cdev. It's a character device file, major number 64 minus zero. And now let me become root user. And if I echo, hello world, this is a test. And if I write it to um, def my c def, this should work. And if I use cat def my c def, I will get it back. And last, last but not least, let's take a look at the kernel's log. So you can see write was called once and we could write all these bytes here successfully. But um, read was called two times. So the first time the variable with pointer points at was set to zero because we want to read from position zero. Then we increment the position by 256 and then cat did a second read call but this time the offset or yeah, the variable behind this pointer was set to 265. It returned zero. It indicated end of line was reached and it terminates. So cool, it worked. So yeah, that's how to use character devices and registering device numbers in the Linux kernel module. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy my coffee on buymycoffee.com slash Linux for Linux. And it would be really interesting if my new explanations are better or equal to my older ones. So please also check out my old videos and give me feedback in the comment down below. So that's it from me. Thanks for watching and goodbye.